Hi everyone, this is Lauren from Lemon Sky Actions and I'm going to show you how you can composite a newborn um, onto a rugby ball. Um, obviously you can use this for any kind of compositing, you can composite a newborn into a hat, um, <laughs> onto, I don't know, a pair of boxing gloves, whatever your parents bring, um, because if you're anything like me, parents turn up to the session with something important to them. Um, in this case it was a rugby ball and we've been asked for this one before. Sometimes it's a navy hat. Um, I live in Portsmouth, it's a very big naval town. So sometimes um, we get parents asking if they can pop their baby um, into a navy hat. Um, I get asked that one quite a lot. But so the same, the same principle applies. Today I'm going to be concentrating on the rugby ball. So why compositing? Why composite um, in Photoshop? Why not just shoot onto the rugby ball? Well, I'm a firm believer in safety um, and not taking chances and also making the newborn session as comfortable and relaxing for baby as possible. And to me, positioning baby, um, trying to get them up onto a rugby ball, even if you get their hands and their face up here, what's going on down there with their legs? Their legs are either in a kneeling position, which is unsafe because they can launch forward. Um, they're in a froggy position, which of course newborns love being in a froggy position. But around a dirty old rugby ball, I'm not so sure about that. So what I do is I composite onto the beanbag. I plan for the shot, obviously, here's the rugby ball with the little blanket on top. Here is the newborn with the little blanket underneath. I've tried to keep the lighting the same, the angle the same, just to really make sure that I can get that baby onto the rugby ball with as little fuss as possible in Photoshop. So baby was never anywhere near the rugby ball in the shoot. Um, this also means because baby is on position, um, in position on the beanbag, really comfortable, really safe. This is mum's hand. She's right there next to the baby, supporting baby's head at all times. It then means I get this other shot once the hands are removed. I get the nice head on hand shot. So that is another really nice shot for mum's gallery. I can then go on and carry on with the flow posing. Baby's already in position, baby's comfortable, baby's safe, baby is supported and being moved as little as possible, not being manipulated onto a big rugby ball. So I can just carry on with my flow posing, blah da da, blah blah blah. Baby is happy and the shoot is shorter and less stressful for baby, less stressful for me trying to get a baby onto a rugby ball, less stressful for mum who probably hasn't slept trying to get her to kind of hold her baby on her stinky old rugby ball. So back to uh, what we were doing. I'm kind of digressing a little bit. I can talk a lot. So to get this shot of baby looking sleepy and happy on the rugby ball. These are the three shots I'm going to be using. This one um, I like the best because baby is, you know, at the right angle. I shot slightly up. Um, I'll chat about that more in a moment. Um, but mum's hand is right here and that's going to be difficult to remove so I took another shot with her hand holding baby's head up here so I have this whole area clear to composite. This one I'm not so keen on baby's um, hand placement so I won't be using any of that I much prefer this one so here I'm just going to be using that area and here is the rugby ball ready for baby. I took the rugby ball shot um, a little afterwards so I took these photos of baby we, they, we, we then went on to the uh, the side pose, um, a slight taco, a uh, tushy up on the baby's back. So we did the session mostly on white. Um, and then I went back and shot the rugby ball with the same light and the same background to pop baby on. So let's get started. As I said, I'm in Lightroom. This is the way I prefer to edit. I prefer to import into Lightroom where I can um, organize my images, you can cull them down, you can star rate them, you can organize them into your editing order and you can get rid of the ones you don't want. Um, you can also apply basic settings like um, white balance and exposure and all sorts of things like that. So I always start in Lightroom. Um, if you don't have Lightroom, obviously you can, you know, open the images in Photoshop however way you're comfortable. You can get them straight in off the camera, um, you can use um, you know, Photo Raw, ACR, however you like to use it, you can even use Bridge. Um, if you don't use Photoshop and Lightroom together, I'd really recommend it. I'm not some kind of weird spokesperson for Creative Cloud, um, but it's amazing. It's really, really amazing. So I've just selected the three photos I'm going to use to create this rugby ball composite. I've selected them all. I'm going to right click them 
edit in Photoshop and this is now opening the three images up into Photoshop for me which is great um, and like I said I'd really recommend using Lightroom and Photoshop together because once I save these it's going to put them back into Lightroom so I don't lose my order, I don't lose the editing um, change is scary if you if you use an older version of Photoshop, if you haven't got Creative Cloud, if you've never really used Lightroom, it's a scary thought. Um, we don't like change, do we? I, I grew up on the Isle of Wight. And um, the, the phrase on the Isle of Wight, for those who don't know, is a tiny, tiny little island 60 miles round off the coast of the south of England. And the phrase on the Isle of Wight was... We don't like change around these parts, and it's true. Who who likes change? Nobody likes change. Um, but really, change is good, change is growth. I'd get Lightroom and Photoshop to work together if you don't already. So, let's get started. This is the rugby ball, like I said. These are the two images I'm going to be compositing. Um, all these images. So I'm just setting my Photoshop up a little bit because I'm on a different desktop today and all my normal settings aren't here. I've got one hand on the keyboard, can you hear it? And I've got the other hand on the mouse. If you use a graphics tablet, great. If you use a Mac, excellent. I'm using an old PC with a keyboard covered in coffee stains because I drink coffee like a maniac and a really old-fashioned plug-in mouse. Um, so, first off, I'm going to duplicate the layer. You can do that by right-click duplicate layer. Um, I've used uh, Control J to duplicate. Um, you can use Command J if you're on a Mac. So, I'm just going to fix this one up first. I'm going to use the patch tool to do this here. If you've got my um, CC, I'm just patching out the way. Obviously, you can clear the background up however you like, but this is going to be a really extensive tutorial. I'm going to show you loads of other stuff as well that you might not be able to do, um, aside from just the compositing. So as you can see there, I've cleaned up the background. If you have the, uh, the newborn actions, the LSP, my signature newborn collection, you can do this using the select and fix um, action, which is really, really cool. So you get your patch tool, draw around the area and select and fix it. Again, select and fix. So you can just draw around, you can hold shift to make a couple of selections, select and fix. And what this does, it will automatically fix the background for you. So let's flatten that one down. First off, let's work on the baby. So this is the shot I really want to use. I think this shot where his face is um, the angle here is I shot slightly up the nose because obviously I shot this to composite onto the rugby ball and his head wouldn't be kind of hanging down over the ball. If he was genuinely positioned behind that ball, leaning on it, he would be looking slightly up or at least directly towards the camera. So it, it goes well to put a little bit of thought into your shot as you take it and not as an afterthought. This little man uh, from delivery has a rather large lump on his head here which I'm also going to show you how to fix so you get loads of little bonus points in here because this is a real time live edit. This one I'm going to use for this portion of his head only so I'm going to select that with the patch tool. I don't need any other parts, I don't need any of this. I'm going to hit Control c to copy this or you can hit Command c if you're on a Mac, Control c if you're on a PC, copy that area onto this one and paste it in. Now I'm going to take the opacity down, I'm going to hit Control t to transform. If you uh, don't know what that is, you can go to Edit, Free Transform, and it says here, Control t If you're on a Mac, it will say Command t If you're on a Mac, basically take anything I'm saying as Control and swap it with Command. As you can see now, I'm because I've taken the opacity down, I can see this overlaying, and I'm dragging it around to um, get it resized to fit right in here. I'm doing this manually. If you've got two images that line up pretty much perfectly, you can use um, Edit Auto Align Layers, which is a fantastic feature of Photoshop um, Creative Cloud. So I'm just looking for these main areas I really want to line up. You can right click warp and you can warp it in a little bit if you want to. Obviously I'm mainly looking at his ear being in place, his shoulder, anywhere where mum's hand is um, that I want to paint over. So that's basically it. I might come back and tweak that in a minute. So as you can see, I've copied in just that bit there. I'm going to put a layer mask on it. Click down here. If you don't know what layer masks are, oh my goodness, they are amazing. So I've put a layer mask on here. 
I'm going to invert that layer mask by holding Control I. Um, you can even get paint bucket and fill it with black. Whatever you do, make it black um, because black means invisible, white means visible. So because it's black, I'm going to get a brush um, set to white and I'm going to start painting in just the area I want to show. You can see here the white is showing now where I want that composite layer to show through. So I'm just in nice and close to make sure the ear, the shoulder and anywhere else where I want to um, overlay this new layer looks natural and good. Okay. So there we go, I have composited her hand out of the way. And if I wanted to, I can now come and tidy up this way. I've gone back to a black brush. So basically, remember, black means make it invisible. So there we go. No more hands. This works well as well if you're doing, um, you know, a froggy pose or anything else where you've got hands supporting baby. Operating safely is the most important thing when photographing newborns. If I can fix it afterwards in Photoshop, I will. I would never take the risk. Um, of letting a baby go just for a second even if they seem completely chilled completely relaxed I probably could have got him in this position and left him there quite happily but why risk it why risk it when you can come and fix it afterwards so I've duplicated the background first off I'm going to sort this little bumpy head out so I'm going to go filter liquify and this will open up your liquify filter up here the forward warp tool this means you can push and I'm going to make this size about here. Your liquify may look like this, or if you click advanced mode, you get a few more options. You want to make your brush mm, probably about this big, I'd say. And I'm making sure the middle of the brush, where there would normally be a crosshair, but there's not for liquify, is here. And I'm just slowly, slowly, softly, softly dragging this little bumpy bit of his head in just to make his head um, look a bit more of a normal shape. I wouldn't do this normally, um, you know, baby is as they are on the photo, but mum specifically requested this. Um, she, she asked if his head could be, you know, the swelling taken down just a little bit. So, once you've done um, your basic kind of corrections, your basic, um, you know, getting the image looking how you want it to go onto your rugby ball. Flatten it down. I'm also going to remove this knee because really in a rugby ball shot you wouldn't have that knee in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the clone stamp by hitting S or you can click here, clone stamp. And I'm going to make it maybe 75% hard because this isn't too blurry. If I cloned in with a really soft brush, it would make this very, very blurry. I'm going to clone in from about here. As you can see, I'm doing lots of small clicks. I'm not just kind of swooping it in like that because to me, softly, softly is more important. The smaller you go, the softer you want to go. Now, I'm working straight on my background layer, but I would really recommend you working on a duplicate layer for cloning. Just in case you make a mistake, you can go back and, um, you know, fix it or erase it. But I'm being a bit naughty, a bit of a rebel, and um, doing it straight this way. So, I have now cloned his knee out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the select tool and I'm going to select the baby, probably around there. Control C for copy, Command C for Mac, or you can go edit, copy. If you've got multiple layers you want to flatten first before you do this or you'll only copy the top layer and you might end up with just like a bit of head or something. And I'm going to do Control V and paste the baby into the image. As before, when I was removing the hand, I'm going to take the opacity down a little bit. And this is the point where, again, you would hit Control T for Transform, Command T for the Mac, um, or go to Edit Free Transform. Hold down Shift to resize, because if you don't hold down Shift, you'll end up doing this, which, um, 
you know, doesn't look right. Shift keeps the proportions the same, however you resize it. So resize baby until they fit quite nicely um, onto that rugby ball. Now really I would recommend shooting the exact same distance away so you know your baby and your rugby ball in the frame are the same size so when you place the baby in they're the correct size. I didn't because I shot the ball um, once I'd already finished the posing of baby and I was obviously at a different distance away. I was using a prime lens for this, um, the 35 and I was obviously not a hundred percent in the same place. So what I'm going to say about there is right. So now I've placed baby on top of the ball. Pop the opacity up, put a layer mask on like we just did. So we've got a white layer mask and invert it. Control I or Command I to make it black. So the layer mask is preventing this layer from being seen even though it's there. Now I'm going to get a white brush because remember white means show and I'm going to start really lightly painting baby in. As you can see the uh, the light was slightly different as well so baby has got this white halo showing but I'm going to fix that in a minute so that's fine. Try and get it as right as you can in the camera but um, you know if your white balance and your exposure are slightly different for these two shots that's okay because you can fix it. So there is our beginning, there is baby on the ball. What I'm going to do is duplicate that layer and I'm going to go into liquify to bring his arms down just a little bit to make it look even more realistic that he was um, on the rugby ball. So again, get your forward warp tool and with liquify, softly, softly, gently, gently, you don't want to overdo it a little bit and then realise that something doesn't look right, so only do what would have naturally been there anyway. So I'm just bringing his arms down just a smidge, just so he's got that little bit more of a rugby ball kind of shape to him. I'm also going to move this shoulder a tiny bit um, because of the way he was laying there. Just to smooth that down a little bit more. Okay. So we can see from the layer underneath, he's now slightly curved over the ball. So I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm saving. I'd always recommend saving your progress. Um, I've just hit Control S. And what this is doing is saving it straight back into Lightroom. So when I go back into Lightroom, my progress is being saved in there, which is fantastic. Duplicate the layer. I'd always recommend duplicating. Now, first off, this halo. We need to get the background the same colour. So I'm going to click on the background layer because I want to brighten that up rather than darkening the baby out layer. And I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer here. I'm not going to click on background and go image adjustment levels because that will directly affect the image. And I might not want to do that. You might not want to do that. You might want something that is entirely independent. This levels layer will affect all the layers underneath it. In this case, there is only background. And what I want to do is brighten up the background so that it matches this halo here around the baby. And to do that, I'm going to click the right hand brightness levels and bring them up just a smidge until that halo pretty much disappears. So I'm happy with that. Okay, and you can even change the opacity of this layer if you want to. It's all very, very manual and um, uh, non destructive. So I'm going to start tidying up now around these edges. You see the white balance is slightly off too because the um, baby's mohair wrap underneath is very very white and the uh, the rugby ball wrap is kind of a yellowy colour so that's obviously something I did um, between taking these shots. But that's okay because we'll fix that. I'm glad it's not perfect because I can show you all these little tricks to fix things. So go onto the layer mask, um, get a black brush because I'm erasing now, I'm erasing certain parts away. I want it to be a little bit hard um, around the edges of baby. Perhaps not so hard on the mohair wrap. So you can see here I'm just starting to really blend baby in. Because I've added these levels in, this area is a bit too bright um, on the background now. And that's fine. I can fix that in a minute. 
So Baby is looking a lot more like he is on his rugby ball now. Now I'm going to get a black brush on the levels layer because I want to remove some of this stark bright that I've put down here. It's all about blending. Blend, blend, blend. And now I'm going to get a lower opacity brush. I was on 100% before and I'm going to start lightly blending this mohair wrap in. Just so it really kind of shows, but not 100%. I'm also going to pop another levels layer above baby. And obviously, like I said before, an adjustment layer will affect all the other layers below it. If you don't want it to, you can right click, create a clipping mask, and that has clipped it just to the baby. So if I make changes now to this levels layer, it's only going to affect the baby. And what do I want to do? I want to take down the brightness of this um, very, very white wrap. So it matches the slight darkened yellow version of the ball and the other wrap. So I'm going to use the mid-tones for this and I'm just going to... I've just got my eye here and I'm going to take them down. You can also take this one down here. Well, I'm kind of taking it up. Just to make it all a bit darker. Add a bit of contrast in too. Don't worry about baby. Ignore baby. I'm looking here. This is the only area my eyes are at right now. And then I'm going to invert it. You're going to get sick of me saying, and then I'm going to invert it. So I've made it black. I'm getting a small white brush, and I'm going to start painting this darkness in now. Um, I don't want it to go on the baby's skin. I only want this to kind of go onto this wrap area. If you shot with the same light and the same everything for both shots then you won't have to do this and I'm also going to now pop another levels layer onto the background and I'm going to brighten up the background wrap so this also will match the um, the baby's wrap so these are the small details that it's really worth um, you know really worth noticing and changing while you can it's a lot easier to change when you've got all of your separate layers than it is to do um, when you've when you've got you know when you've flattened it. Ooh, hang on. So now I'm going to go back into baby, and I'm going to zoom right in, and I'm really going to get baby blending now. I've got a black brush to erase baby more look see erases baby. Uh, put the hardness up just a smidge, and I'm going to really start erasing this baby now. I've got my finger on the keyboard, like I said before, and my finger right now is on X. Look what happens here to this brush palette when I hit X. It's changing, can you see? X means swap. So white, black, white, black, X, 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 X. So I can very quickly change, as I'm doing right now, between black and white. And once you kind of get used to that, it happens without you even thinking about it. I'm using H, I'm hitting H to move, back onto B for brush, and I'm hitting X to change. If you use key cut people commands, you'll kind of you'll understand that. If you don't, then um, get using them. They're amazing. They save you so much time. So all of this um, is literally kind of stuff I'm automatically doing without really thinking about it. It's kind of like driving after a while. You can just do this stuff. Um, and the more practice you have, the better. So, there is Baby composited onto the blanket. I'm making Baby visible and invisible so I can see if there's any weird bits popping up that I haven't thought of. And yep, yeah, there is a little bit there. So it's good to go on, off, on, off, on, off. Make sure there's not like a random splodge or something. The bit that's concerning me right now is there is no shadow here when there should be. If you see the original, there is some shadow. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to make another levels layer above the background because I want to put the shadow onto the background underneath baby. And I'm just going to drag the darks down a little bit there make it all a bit darker and yep you guessed it invert the layer I'm gonna get a small white brush and I'm just gonna pop with the white brush now on that dark layer I've just made 
I'm just going to pop a bit of dark um, in there around the underside of baby's arm just to create a bit of um, you know real natural kind of looking shadow so that's where we are now I'm going to pop all of that that I've just done into a group so we can see the before and after and I am going to get rid of this highlighting here because having made it visible and invisible which like I just said a minute ago I would strongly recommend you do a lot I can see the highlighting looked a bit odd okay so there is baby on the ball and we're pretty much done the last thing is to tidy out this area around baby's head and to do that I'm going to use the magic wand tool um, but I'm going to switch it to quick selection tool and you will get a little cut kind of across hair come up like this start dragging it around baby and as you can see it's super intelligent at selecting so now it has made a big selection around baby but not all of the hairs so click on refine edge and it will give you this image if it's not on white you can have it on black you can have it as an overlay I'm going to go for on white because the background's white and that's very handy so go onto the brush um, depending on the size of your image you want, might want to change the size a little bit and lightly stroke this around the edge of baby's head where you want to catch the hairs or the details or any other areas you also want to select and soften which it's doing now it's as you can see it's now selecting these little hairs a bit better output to selection and hit OK so now you can see baby is nicely selected and what I'm going to do is go back on the layer mask I'm going to go select inverse that means I've now selected everything else apart from the baby go into a brush a black brush and I'm going to start erasing the uh, the white halo that was there you know anything else I want to kind of tidy up without affecting baby if the selection looks a bit odd and I would strongly strongly recommend zooming in and having a look afterwards because you're on a layer mask this is very non-destructive get a white brush oop, and um, start painting some of this hair back in but only lightly just get rid of those kind of fuzzy pixelated edges because the magic wand is fantastic but sometimes it can go a bit heavy on the selection so there we go so now I'm going to flatten the image because I'm happy so far with how it's looking I'm hitting save it's putting that back over into Lightroom and now this is the point where you can just carry on with your normal edits you can edit baby's skin um, edit the background if you've done this on a darker you know if you've got wood in the background if you've got anything you want to fix now is where you just carry on with your normal editing routine for me that would be running the um, the LSP newborn signature actions um, which I'm gonna do very very quickly I'm gonna play a complete baby quick fix set which as you can see it's um, running quite quickly it actually does run very quickly but I've got Lightroom my video recording software um, and Photoshop open right now um, so my computer's a little bit stretched because I'm on the old PC so let's edit baby um, so you've got your layer masks here they're all inverted because I think I'm a little bit addicted to black inverted layer masks you want your opacity somewhere between 20 and 40 and I'm going to start from the bottom so I'm going to soften the baby's skin up um, cheeks arms don't run this over eyelashes or you know anywhere else it's a very natural skin softener it's not plastic like some skin softeners can look um, or you know some programs when you overdo it a touch like portraiture this is all very very much controlled by you reduce the reds um, I'm going to run that just on any areas that I think look a bit red on baby. So this will just lightly, lightly take those reds down, not too much. 
cheeks and lips you can pop a bit of color back in here the natural tones of the cheeks and the lips I'm going to take the opacity down there because I've overkilled that I do have a tendency to overkill paint away and then I'll paint away the yellow a little bit of yellow coming in here around his head and his eyebrows warm skin tone yeah why not I'll pop a bit of warmth over the baby um, bring back the details this is great for um, eyelashes lips eye eyebrows fingers and hairline brighten up baby let's pop a little bit of brightness on I'm going to go for brighten up more straight away because I want this image to have quite a bit of contrast to it so I'm just going to brighten that baby up a touch if it's too much take it down so before and after the complete baby quick fix set brighten up baby you can invert that and have the whole, whole image bright if you wanted to works particularly good um, if you've got a white background and as you can see I've used the black brush just to erase that off the ball and the baby so let's flatten that one down I'm going to duplicate the layer uh, hit Control T for transform remember edit free transform hold down shift and I'm going to pop this um, how I'd like it cropped in the image as you can see here I now have a line I'm going to select that go into the actions and hit select and fix remember we touched on that a little bit in the beginning so that has gone now okay so that is how we composite a baby onto a rugby ball and I'm going to very very quickly use the patch tool here to get rid of some of these spots this baby has got remarkably beautiful skin which is really nice um, but I'm just patching oh, thank you computer I'm just patching um, some of these bits out the way patch tool is fantastic it's up here on the spot healing brush menu so you draw around an area you select it and you drag it to somewhere you want to replace it with don't drag it anywhere randomly so if I drag that to a nostril he now has a nostril on his cheek drag it to somewhere that looks quite similar so with the eyelashes I'm dragging them to similar um, areas once you get your head around it you'll be able to do it super fast like I'm doing it right now um, like with everything with Photoshop layer masks anything like that like I've said before it's all about the um, practice 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 make yourself do it don't fear change just do it and after a while you will not even be thinking about it right don't show it again because that's annoying me okay oh there's something right on the end of his nose okay there we go and now i would just normally just finish this up by thinking you know is there anything here that i would like to do are there any changes i'd like to make or am i going to go back into lightroom i think I'm going to reduce the reds a teensy bit more on baby's face. So I'm just using a white brush. You could also play peachy skin um, if you want to make the skin tone a little bit peachier, which that's playing now. Um, although I've run that from the background there that I didn't correct, but that's okay because I don't think you would do that. So. I'm just popping a little bit of peachy tone um, over the baby. Uh, warm up purple skin, I'm going to get that finger because when I reduced the red, so I also took quite a bit of colour out of this finger. Um, that's not a circulation issue, it's more of a shadow issue. Baby was in this position for all of about 30 seconds. Okay, so there is our baby on a rugby ball. Um, I'm going to play go away purple because to me the image looks a tiny little bit purple and I'm going to pop that in maybe at around 5% okay flatten down and save and now what this is doing is it's saving straight back down into Lightroom so now I can get rid of these originals don't need those anymore if I open Lightroom back up there it is made using these images there is our baby on a rugby ball um, that would normally take you a lot less time to do um, it's taken me 
a long time because I've been talking and chatting about everything and doing things quite slowly. Once you know your tools, once you know the tools to use, you can really compose it very, very quickly. And it's 100% worth it. It's worth it to, you know, to save the baby the the trouble of trying to kind of position them on a ball asleep when they're when they're happy when they're relaxing and it also frees you up for for this as well you can have the shot um you know you've you've positioned baby in that position for the rugby ball once you've got your rugby ball shot great go back to it later you can just carry on posing so baby is very happy very relaxed on the beanbag and you have got more photos for your gallery I also composite the balloon um, in this way. I composite that baby was on the beanbag, never left the beanbag. Um, as with this baby, he never left the beanbag. This baby, exactly the same as before, composited onto the rugby ball um, out of three safety shots. Uh, so with this little girl, she was composited, do I have the shots? Yes, I do. Out of these two images. Um, same as that little guy in the hat. This little boy on a hat, we get lots of naval families around here. Um, this little girl was composited into the moon using the moon and the bed prop. So I carried on photographing her on the bed and then used one of the bed shots to pop her into the moon. So, rugby ball, safety shots, done in Photoshop, super, super quick, and I really hope that helped. Um, make sure you join my private group if you're not already a member because I'm always in there, I'm always around. I'm really geeky when it comes to Photoshop and I can really often help you out. And if I can't, there are other people in there who can. Please do this shot safely. Please composite it. Please don't balance baby onto a ball. Um, even though it might save you a bit of time in editing, is it really worth it? Is it really safe? And you know, is it not nicer to just keep baby on the beanbag and carry on posing them as you normally would? So that's compositing in Photoshop. Don't be afraid of it. Um, just have a go, refer back to this video. And I really hope um, that I've taught you something. I hope you've learned something. And I can't wait to see your baby composites. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching. And thank you for supporting me at Lemon Sky Actions. Bye.